Okay, so we should be ready to start again. Um, yes. So before moving on, there was a question during the la during the break. Um, just one very simple question. Okay, uh, there's a public folder here. I mean, just ignore it, okay? It has nothing to do with the public that we had last time during the lecture. This is the client part, uh, and uh, we will work always in app. And maybe we can have, uh, you know, static stuff there, but uh, for the moment, just ignore it, okay? So if we would like to develop uh, uh, something here, as we will do now during the lecture, we will work in app or in general in yes, SRC folder, okay? Okay, fine. So um, let's move on. And now that we got the first flavor of how React works, we will try to exploit React as much as possible to convert our application that we designed last time with HTML stuff or HTML elements, and etc., into uh, um, uh, JSX components with some properties, okay? Just to have something that is more um, flexible, okay? Um, okay, so this is the conceptual overview, how, how things work in React. So there are components, the stuff that we saw here before with the um, uh, uh, first letter up, uppercase that we can define uh, as we like, so in short, uh, we can give the name that we like, of course, it doesn't clash with something else. And this component can be predefined, so the, the lowercase are the predefined components of React, the HTML ones, or the ones that we define uh, with our functions, okay? And these functions, okay, grazie. And, um, and so, uh, the component uh, can be used in many places. So it can be used when we create something else, okay? Uh, so, non funziona tutte, vero? Non c'è alcuna che funziona. Not even one. Cosa vuol dire? Allora, facciamo all'intervallo, va con la... Eh, eh sono le mezzogiorno, io finisco a luna. Dopo le cose, spegnere tutto e far ripartire il sistema. Ok. Ok. Uh, I'm sorry for today. I, I think you need to stay without the electricity until uh, 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 1 p.m., more or less. I mean, until we finish this. And then... Not sure if you are staying here or moving. Sorry about that. Um, I mean, we are not even sure that closing and opening uh, it, it, it works. So, I mean, we would lose 10 minutes without, uh, you know, being sure that we solve something. Sorry. Uh, so if you would like to move around because you have uh, plugs in the wall, uh, I mean, feel free to do it, uh, okay? Um, so we were saying that we have our components that we define and we can use with the syntax, the JSS, JSX syntax. And then, uh, um, in short, uh, we create elements, okay? And elements are composed by an element tree. So when we uh, define, uh, actually we use a component, we can have children. And we can, to have children, we simply nest stuff, okay, within the, the component, as we do with HTML tags, with HTML elements, okay? Okay, fine. So we talk about uh, React elements, okay? Um, so a React element, in short, is something, uh, it's a component, okay? Uh, that represents something that we will put uh, into the DOM, okay? Either a single HTML element or an element uh, tree, okay? So a tree of elements. Uh, it represents something in the virtual DOM, remember. Then React will translate it into the real DOM, okay? 
and uh, uh, it contains information about, of course, the component type. So, in short, the name that we give to the component, so the name of the function. Its properties uh, that are basically the attributes. Uh, you remember the example, uh, we define the attributes. Uh, so, like uh, here, this attribute lang, that's not an HTML attribute because but my button is not an HTML component. It's a, a component. Uh, I mean, it's not an HTML element, it's a component that I define in React, and so I define the name, and also I define the attributes that can be used with this component, okay? So in short, the, the, the properties that will be passed to that component, that uh, will be used later, okay? So like props, lang, and so on, okay? Uh, good. And then any child, uh, so it means all the children, if I nest something inside the component, again, so this component is closed here, but I can write something and then close the, my button, right? So I can also insert children here if I like, okay? And they can be accessed uh, later in the, in the function, my button, okay? Uh, okay. Um, so, in short, the components for React are not a piece of the HTML that we would like uh, uh, um, that appears in the browser window, but just a description of what we would like uh, the React uh, make appear in the browser window. So the components are just a description of what we would like to show, okay? And then React, is in charge of showing them, okay? Okay. Um, so these are more technical slides about how the React uh, works inside. Uh, actually, that's what I was saying before. Actually, there's a, this create element that is the equivalent of the uh, JavaScript uh, create element, uh, window create element for, for the basic JavaScript inside the browser. And React has its own that takes the type, so the name of the component, the properties, and the children, okay? Uh, I will skip these slides, this, um, this, uh, slides because uh, just, uh, you know, technical stuff that uh, up happens inside React because we will always write in JSX format and not directly by calling React functions, okay? The only function called by React is already done for us by the template, the white template that uh, already created uh, the React application. Uh, okay, just co some conventions, uh, as you already saw, the DOM elements are all lower, lower case. So this is all case sensitive, so pay attention to the case. React co components are always uppercase first, first letter at least. And the two types of element can be mixed. Uh, they don't inherit anything, they are just composed. I mean, it's a tree. If we would like to compose something, we need to put uh, the other text uh, between the start and the end tag of the, of the um, component, okay? And the elementary describe a portion of the virtual DOM, of course. Okay, so the JSX, how it works? Well, you already saw it, so we just uh, add a few things uh, to understand better what we can actually do and what we cannot, okay? So, first of all, all text must be closed or self-closing, you know, that we can use the slash at the end of the tag, uh, um, at the start of the tag, the first tag, to say there's no children, and so this, uh, this tag is also closed, open and closed immediately, okay? Just pay attention to these things because this is XML, so tags uh, which are not self-closing will not work. Like, for instance, the classical tag image, e IMG, we typically, you don't close in HTML, here needs to be closed, otherwise uh, the parser will give you an error. So when you, when you start the, the web server, it uh, parses all this JSX and simply gives you an error. But it, it, this is easy, I mean, getting used to this stuff is easy. Values of the attributes can be strings or also other JavaScript types, in particular numbers. How can we write numbers as values of attributes? Well, opening the curly brackets. Opening the brackets means that's a JavaScript expression. So any, Java, any valid JavaScript expression can be put here, okay? 
And uh, of course, the, your component should know which value to expect for each attribute, so for each property, because it receives, it receives the value as properties, okay, as part of the props. Okay, fine. Uh, so in short, just remember that strings are fine, okay, and uh, values uh, JavaScript expression. Uh, okay, the, this we, we already understood this. Um, we can use the JSX wherever a valid JavaScript can be used, okay? Because the JSX only exists in our source file. First thing that is done by the React uh, uh, you know, framework is to take the JSX and convert it into React calls, to function calls, okay? As, as in the previous slide. I mean, this stuff is converted in, in, in the stuff on the left is converted to the stuff on the right. So it's actually JSX is actually JavaScript code, okay? When it is compiled, when it is translated. Okay, so wherever we can put JavaScript expressions, we can put uh, JSX code, okay? Uh, and this means not only in components, we can store JSX into arrays, into values of properties and so on, depending on what you need, okay? I, I would say this is not so common, but uh, it can be done, okay? Um, may be enclosed uh, in the brackets for clarity because uh, that's just the JavaScript expression, adding a brackets, uh, I mean, rounded brackets around the JavaScript expression, that's fine, okay? Uh, and sometimes it's even necessary, just, you know, here, if you don't have uh, the, uh, the bracket, either you write this way, okay? This is very common error that that can that may happen. Okay, this works. Huh? Okay, so let me see. No, this doesn't work. Okay, let me see on it on the left. No. Uh, ah, no, doesn't work because there's the other bracket. Okay, it should should work. Okay. This works, uh, but if you do like this, uh, you say it, it doesn't work. Actually, it doesn't give you an error. But here, remember that, uh, you know, returns, return. If it doesn't have an expression following return, inserts automatically a semicolon. Maybe it happened to you sometimes while programming Java, in JavaScript, but this is very common with, Java, with JSX, because with JSX, you want to use new lines uh, quite often, you know, to have uh, things, uh, uh, to, to, to make things clearer, but you cannot simply insert uh, a, a new line after a return, okay, in JavaScript. That's a JavaScript problem, not JSX, okay? So it's very common to start with a bracket, so in short, okay, this will work because if you open a bracket, JavaScript knows that now as an expression should follow and doesn't insert the semicolon. Okay, so instead of returning undefined, uh, you return something, which of course make things work. Okay, uh, okay, good. Uh, when using this uh, uh, custom uh, or, or predefined uh, components, components uh, should be available in the scope because they are actually functions. Okay, so either uh, they are defined in the same file or they are imported, okay? So like we imported the, the button from the React Bootstrap, you remember? We imported the, the button from React Bootstrap and if you don't do this, uh, it doesn't work, okay? If you forget the import, no. If you forget the import, it shouldn't work. My button, I don't, actually I don't really know why it works. Anyway, 
Yeah, actually, it means it rendered nothing. I mean, it doesn't give you an error, but simply it will be undefined, probably. Okay, and it simply doesn't work. Okay, so let's save it. Okay. Um, okay, so everything needs to be defined in the scope or imported. Okay. Attributes, I already told you, you can use the, the strings uh, or you can use uh, curly brackets and use a JavaScript value, that means a number or uh, a um, true false uh, or in general any JavaScript fashion. Of course, something that has a value, you cannot just uh, you know, create a function and write code. I mean, it should be an expression that has a certain value, either a string, uh, um, boolean or number, okay? An expression is accepted, not code, okay? Um, uh, the, what you put inside, the, between the start and end tag is available as props children, so there are automatic props available for your components, okay? Um, they are not used that often, but uh, means remember that when, uh, when you are uh, expecting your component to have uh, something nested inside, okay? Um, okay. Um, we can specify children using curly brackets. So in this way, th this is very, very useful. And um, in particular, I I it's useful because that's a, the, the way in which uh, typically we express uh, a list of components, like we, um, we are creating lists. Because we write an expression, a JavaScript expression that returns an array, and each element of this array will be a component, okay? Um, okay, so like here, uh, if you return an array by this expression, so red render admin menu, we return an array. Each element of the array will be taken, and if it's a component, it will be rendered, okay? Uh, undefined null or falsy value are not, uh, or also true values are not rendered. There's nothing to render, okay? Uh, and that's a way to avoid rendering. So like if uh, this expression returns false, nothing is rendered. If it returns true, uh, the value of the expression will be used to render the, the content, okay? And uh, see that we can uh, use uh, JavaScript within uh, uh, JSX, uh, within JavaScript and so on, so the things can be nested because actually JSX is just uh, JavaScript expressions, okay? But you will get used to this, okay? Not that difficult. Um, I'm going a little bit fast because I would like to show you an example of how to proceed for, for the next lab, not tomorrow, but in, in a week. Uh, in the component, you may render props children, of course, but this is not that uh, um, uh, common, at the m actually, because sometimes you write a component and you don't have children because you have components that uh, um, um, handle the whole render for themselves, okay, without using external components. Or if you use external components, uh, the, you, you specify the whole tree and not just uh, expect that somebody else specify what to put there. Um, HTML attributes, sometimes uh, uh, some HTML attributes don't have a value. Uh, the simple present activates the behavior like in the lists and so on, or the active uh, or disabled and stuff like that. Uh, you can uh, um, you can uh, use them in JSX. If they are present, they work as HTML, and you can also disable them uh, by assigning a false value. Okay, this didn't used to be like this, uh, but in recent versions of uh, React in JSX, uh, the simple presence is the, it's fine. Okay, it's like uh, writing equal to true. Okay. Uh, if they, they are not present, of course, they are, they are false, but you can also assign a false value that is convenient because sometimes you need to disable them conditionally depending on a JavaScript expression, okay? Um, fine. Comments. 
comments are, are ugly, OK? So there's no way to insert comments in JavaScript in JSX. Uh, you cannot use the JavaScript syntax. You cannot use the HTML syntax because it doesn't work here in JSX, OK? If you want to insert a comment, you must do that by embedding a JavaScript expression. So opening curly bracket, opening the comment, the JavaScript comment, and then closing all the stuff, OK? It's ugly, we know, and, but you don't have to do these things so often, luckily, OK? Uh, and of course, they are just comments, so you can comment, uh, you know, w whatever you like. So it means, uh, I would like to insert a comment here. I cannot simply write like this. I need to write uh, something like, uh, uh, yeah. okay, comment. And this stuff should work, okay? We know it's ugly, it's not so nice, but that's what we have, okay? Um, okay, then there are a bit of technicalities uh, for some attributes like the style, you need to pass an object and not a list of properties, a string of properties and stuff like that. There are camel, camel, camel case and not with a dash and all this stuff. But I mean, when you, when you need them, uh, you will search a little bit online and you'll find uh, somebody that suggests you how to do, okay? This is just uh, for completeness. Um, okay. One, one thing that could be useful is the spread syntax. You know the three dots that we already encountered in JavaScript. They work in JSX as well. And allows you to pass all the properties of an object as attributes of a component. Okay? It's like writing on the left. Uh, what, uh, so if you have message and recipient, and you have an object that contains this message and recipient as two attributes, you can pass them as attributes to the component with the spread syntax, like if you were uh, doing it manually as done on the left part of the slide. Uh, you can use the spread also when you are receiving the properties, but this is JavaScript, okay? This is not JSX, this is JavaScript. The props are just an object, okay? Props are just a uh, JavaScript object, so you can extract some uh, properties from an object with the uh, spread syntax of JavaScript, okay? So you extract the property kind, and you put all the other properties in other, and you can pass the other to other components, okay? Just extract the property from an object, JavaScript, pure JavaScript. Okay. Uh, remember to use class name, as, as I was saying, as I was doing before at the break. Class is a reserved keyword for JavaScript, so there's no possibility to use class as attribute, okay? Like for, and we have uh, class name and HTML4. Uh, HTML entities uh, may not be supported in older JavaScript, uh, JSX, sorry, and uh, you can use Unicode characters. So you can copy and paste the characters that you like, uh, that you need. Or you should use an escape sequence like this. But uh, I mean, these are very rare, uh, I mean, unusual uh, cases, okay? Um, uh, if something doesn't work, just search online or ask us in the lab and we will help you. Okay, components. Uh, how we declare components, uh, we saw uh, components are just functions. We declare a function that takes one single parameter, props, and we have a component, a React component. And to make the component useful, we must return something that is actually something that can be rendered. So some uh, uh, React elements, either native stuff, div, p, paragraph, uh, table, etc or other components, okay? And components si uh, simply will, uh, uh, will be rendered by React, okay? Um, 
We'll come back to this. No. No, we need to stay here. Okay. Uh, so React, when it sees uh, uh, that you return a component, it will go to the component, see what's written inside the function, run the function, and take the return value until you have uh, only basic uh, elements, so HTML elements, because in the end, uh, React needs to render HTML elements, okay? So like our button, at a certain point, uh, where's the button? At a certain point, okay, it becomes a button from React Bootstrap, which inside will be a button, uh, lowercase b, that is the HTML button, okay? And so at, the at that uh, point, we will see and uh, that uh, React will render exactly this uh, button, okay? You see the lowercase b. Uh, actually, here it's the HTML button, okay? What, what we saw until now, the HTML uh, element, okay? In the DOM here. Yes, question. Yes, yes. So, so what the component returns, your colleague is saying correctly, it's a React element that later will be translated by React into a native HTML tag, okay? And this, this is true for all HTML elements, okay? Uh, so when we wrote here uh, P, here in JSX, actually that's a, a React component, a predefined React component that later, when it's rendered, it will be translated into a P for in HTML, okay? So of course there's one-to-one -one mapping because <laughs> otherwise it would be crazy, okay, to understand what's happening, but uh, every basic HTML element has a mapping in React basic element. Okay, so we can use them in JSX in short. Okay, thank you for the question. So, uh, components in short receive uh, props must return a React element tree, which actually means uh, there should be a single root. We cannot return two elements at the same level. Okay, this is important, but uh, you, you'll get an error and you'll remember this slide and you'll fix it, as we will say in a minute. And uh, um, the return elements uh, are, uh, are the ones returned by the function and they may depend on the props, okay? And they can be computed uh, according to the props, okay? Uh, the function must be a pure function, not side effects and either important. So it means if it's called with the same properties, the result should be exactly the same, again. And state will be minus different, we will see uh, uh, that uh, in, in another lecture. It is normal to create uh, many components. Uh, they don't have a so big overhead, so it's fine for, for to have uh, many React components, okay? Uh, defined by us. And it's also fine to have components constructed by composing other React components, uh, either predefined or our components. No problem, okay? And as usual, try to define components which are useful for you, for your programming style and so on. As you decide where to put a function, you decide where to put a component, okay? Indeed, the component I is in the end a function, okay? Uh, just be careful about uh, lists, okay? Uh, sometimes we need to define lists, uh, and you will have to define lists uh, in the lab, and we will do it uh, today as well with the answers in our example. And uh, to do this, uh, uh, we have elements at the same level, and we say that, that uh, we can uh, specify them in the form of a JavaScript expression, so a single array, for instance. Um, uh, okay, uh, the important thing is that in React, uh, when you specify a list of uh, elements, you always need to add a special attribute, which is called the key, this key, okay? 
that needs to be unique inside the that list, not inside the whole application, but inside that list, okay? Uh, so you must pass a unique key attribute to identify each item. So let's see. Uh, um, okay, list items. Here, this has not been done, okay? So this example is uh, wrong, and it means uh, it generates a warning when it's run. Why we should use a key? Because it helps React identifying which item have changed or which have not. Okay, because you remember the, the story about the virtual DOM that needs to be checked for changes and then, mo uh, and then used to, c to modify the actual DOM. Well, if you have a, a unique key for each element, okay, uh, React knows that if the key didn't change, that element uh, has not changed, so it will, it will not be re-rendered, okay? But, I mean, this is a convenience both for us and uh, for React, okay? So we can identify each element with a single uh, unique key and React uh, as well knows what, to cha what has changed and what has not, okay? It's not impossible for React to check for differences, but it makes the algorithm much, much less efficient because it goes to check things uh, even if they didn't change. And we can just tell React that they didn't change because the key didn't change, okay? And so how do we specify this stuff? Well, simply we add key equal to something. Can be a number, can be a string, can be anything. Uh, the important thing is that it is unique, okay? And uh, for instance, if we have a unique ID from our data, that's fine or uh, otherwise we will define a unique ID in some ways, okay? Um, the uniqueness is required only in the same list, not globally in the whole React application, so this is uh, good news for us. And unfortunately, this key is not available as props, uh, and so if we need the key, we need to pass another attribute with the same value, okay? Uh, last thing, and then we will program a little bit, are React fragments. As I told you, a component should always return a tree of elements with a single root. So it means a tree means uh, there's a single root, okay? Otherwise, there are two trees, if there are two roots, okay? So uh, either we use a container element, like you return a div and you put everything inside a div, but sometimes you cannot use div. There are places where you cannot use divs in HTML like inside the tables or in some spatial environment. So it's not always convenient to use divs. I mean, sometimes it's impossible. And so they invented the spatial node, so this React fragment, that can be used to wrap uh, uh, a certain number of components and have a single root, okay? And the special thing about this React fragment is that it's not rendered in the actual HTML. So it's invisible in the HTML. And since it's so useful, it was also has a, a, a very a convenient syntax. So instead of writing react.fragment, you simply write this way, open and close the, uh, let's say brackets, angle brackets, but are actually less than sign and greater than sign, okay? So it's, a, it's like an empty tag, okay? And it gets interpreted in the JSX as uh, this React fragment, okay? But you will, uh, you will encounter the cases in which uh, you need to uh, use this, uh, this React fragment because uh, uh, when you run the web server, basically it says there's not, no unique uh, root and you need to have a unique root and you remember to add this stuff, okay? So it's an easy to catch error. Okay, so let's program a little bit in the remaining time. We have uh, more or less half an hour. So what we are going to do, well, I'm going to take what I published uh, for this lecture. So if you go on the GitHub and you see week 07, well, there's this morning's uh, my app, okay? But there is also this uh, React QA, where I did exactly the same thing that I did before. So uh, NPM, NPM create, write, et cetera. I just gave the name React question and answer. In the lab, you can create uh, the project with the name you like, film, React film, whatever you like. I don't really care. 
and I did uh, a little bit of modifications, okay? So I already inserted uh, a file that contains uh, answer and questions, okay? So let's, let's see it into the, into the Visual Studio Code, okay? So there's QA models, uh, it's just a JavaScript file that contains uh, answer, questions, and so on. So that's my data model. So in short, the, the place where I have some data to play with, uh, okay? That's exactly the same function that we saw last time, okay? They're just uh, an init, uh, so it creates, uh, you know, four answers to have a list of something, okay, to show. And then there's app, where I already started to insert something. So in short, I, I've taken this uh, uh, old uh, um, example. So I, I've taken the index, okay, that we developed the last time. So last time there was container fluid, the nav bar, uh, the, um, yeah, the title, and then the main uh, with the question, and with the table, with the answers and stuff, okay? And I just copied uh, this stuff and made it uh, in the form of JSX code, okay? So let's have a look. So up, basically return, container, row, call, so these are the React uh, React bootstrap elements corresponding to what I've done in HTML. So in HTML, I had uh, uh, the div class container fluid. You know, you just need to get used to the, you know, uh, names and properties of React bootstrap. Uh, one of you asked me during the break, uh, is there a documentation? Of course, there's a link in the slides, but there's React uh, dash bootstrap.github.io uh, that contains all what you need to know about, uh, you know, the, the uh, React uh, Bootstrap uh, um, components, okay? So they're just, uh, you know, things to copy and paste. They're very easy to understand. Uh, you already know the properties uh, from Bootstrap and they are just mapped uh, in some ways uh, to the uh, um, attributes uh, in uh, um, in React, okay, in the React components. Okay, fine, so I already played a little bit before coming to the classroom, and so, so you already have something from which you can start, which is not uh, just a button example, which is really, really basic, okay? So container, fluid, row, call, there's the nav bar, so there's the nav, nav bar component, but I mean, this is not really special. Uh, just, uh, you know, to show a, a string on the top. And then uh, there's uh, the question. I will uh, fix it later. Uh, and there's the answer. Uh, the answers where I have a table. And at the moment I left the table, you know, as it was in the HTML. You see the basic HTML elements, okay? And we are going to work here because that's the most interesting part of the application, of course. And then there's the footer, okay, nothing really special, okay? Let's try if it works, okay? Oops. I need to go in the terminal. I need to uh, go into my application directory. So in React QA. And you see, I already did the uh, NPM install, so that's the node modules ready, okay? because it takes 74 megabytes uh, of space and, you know, some time and so on. I don't want to lose your precious time, our precious time during a lecture. Okay, so I can just uh, test if it works. npm run dev, okay? Okay, I already stopped the, the, the other example, okay? Otherwise it says that the port is occupied. You can just run one server on a single, on, on one port, okay? okay? So the default port is this one, 51773, uh, okay? So let's see the result, okay? So that's the result, okay? 
This is a React application. So if you go and see with the debugger, you will see the React components. OK? I cannot make them uh, big, unfortunately. But they are, you know, the, the components, the React components are already defined. So in short, it's the Bootstrap container that contains rows and calls. And at the moment, there's nothing really personalized. It means uh, I didn't define nothing. OK, they are just uh, React Bootstrap uh, components. Let's try to define a component made by me. OK? Uh, OK, so let's try. How can we do? So let's start from a very simple component. OK, let's try. Let's start with a very simple one. Let's start with the footer. OK, let's suppose the footer is a component. OK. So instead of specifying footer, etc., here, uh, I cut this code, OK, and then make it uh, as a React component, a very simple component that doesn't take any property because there's nothing to take here, OK? Uh, so how can I define a component in React? I simply write a function, OK? Function, function, my footer. I call it my footer, call it uh, as you like, footer, OK? Up footer, what, whatever you like. Props, OK? That's the way we start writing a component. The second thing we should write is return, OK? And then we decide what to put inside. The component is a function that returns what should be rendered by React. And we already have what should be rendered. It's, it's written here. So footer, OK? We take it and we put it here. It was already JSX, so no. Uh, yes. It's not that difficult, OK? My footer, you see, it's not used. <laughs> I just cut and paste the, the code. And we go down where, where I did a cut. And we use it. Footer, my footer. Remember to close it, OK? Otherwise, uh, we can write like this. My footer, uh, no, close footer, OK? I saved. If it doesn't complain, typically it works. But let's check, OK? Yes, the appearance didn't change. I just created a component, and you will see there's a component here in at the bottom, my footer. That's a React component. Very simple one. No properties has been used. It's a very it's a constant component. Okay, but I've took a part of the the presentation of my application and made it in the form of a function, and I created a component that handles the footer part, OK? Uh, and of course, if you don't close it, uh, let's try. You see what happens. The parser uh, complains a lot, uh, OK? Uh, React, bubble, internal uh, Expect a corresponding JSX closing tag for my footer. I didn't find it. I cannot go on. OK? So uh, it's very common for simple components like this to be self-closing. So use this syntax where you don't have to open and close without nothing in the middle. It's just a heavy way of writing. OK. So let's save it and uh, see if now works. Yes. OK? Uh, always check uh, what's happening, OK? Fine. Let's try to do something more interesting, OK? Uh, oh, what, what did I do? No. I need to be careful not to, to press something and modify things. Uh, uh, 
okay? Um, unexpectedly. Let's make a header component. So we pass a prop, which is uh, the name of the application, okay? So we try to pass a prop. And then we will uh, work on the table, which is more interesting. Function, my, uh, what's it, my header, props, okay? Again, return. Uh, Okay, and then, then just copy and paste. So navbar, okay. Let's put a component here, my header, closed, fine. Uh, let's format this a little bit. Uh, I saved so everything is fine, let's check. Yes, now there should be a my header here. Yes, there is. Okay, that's a my header here where the pointer is. And so nothing has changed in the appearance, of course, just a component. Okay, but now let's decide what to write here in the form of a prop. Okay, so props, uh, let's give a name. App name, uh, what's the name? Yeah, app name. Okay? So, app uh, name equal to, uh, what, what's the name? Uh, hip over run. No, like stack over for hip over run. No. Okay. Let's try again. Yes, it works. Uh, if you click on the my header, you will see there's a property app name heap over run. Okay? But what's the point of doing uh, something like this? The point is that I'm able to use this component, my header, that I define by passing a value. It's like passing a value to a function. Okay? It, it's actually a value for a function. But when you are programming it normally, okay, you pass value to a function because you want to, the function to work on your data. And again, here, in the same way, I would like to have my component to make a render, but using my data as the content, okay? And the content, I decided to pass it as a uh, app name, okay? Uh, <coughs> so what happens if I don't specify this name? Let's save it. It doesn't give you an error, but nothing appears here, right? So it's empty. Right? This is undefined. Undefined doesn't don't uh, no undefined doesn't uh, get rendered. Okay, no render for undefined values by React. So we can simply write uh, a JavaScript expression which has a default value like uh, heap over run. Okay. So what happens now, the prop is empty, okay? Because nothing has, has passed, uh, was passed through to the props. And now there's a default value, which is directly inside the component, okay? But if I specify a value, app name, uh, my fantastic app, okay? Now there's, the same component renders differently because it takes the value from the props. So I didn't modify the code of the components. It's like you didn't modify the code of a function. You pass a different value to the function. It does a different computation. But here, the, the, the important thing is React is a component. If you give the same, uh, the same uh, value as, um, as properties, needs to return the exact same content, okay? While in a function, in a normal function, in a normal programming language, you could use, you could use global variables, have side effects, etc. Here, you should not, you must not, actually, okay? Good. Uh, so, let's remove this stuff. And let's focus on the table. The table is more interesting, right? And, yeah, it will take until the end. The, of the lecture. So the table, um, so uh, there's a table header, fine. Well, first of all, 
try not to use, uh, you know, HTML uh, um, elements directly, but if there is a React uh, Bootstrap element, try to use it, okay? So table exists also in React Bootstrap. You saw the table, uh, uh, you know, th this table is very ugly, right? Let's try to use the, the table from React Bootstrap. So here and here, typically they have the same name, okay? Just uppercase. Um, you can check in the documentation, okay? Layout, force components, uh, tables, okay? Sometimes it is easier to search in Google, React Bootstrap and whatever you <laughs> you would like to find and you directly have access to this page rather than searching here in the documentation, okay? And you saw the difference, right? I already saved, actually I imported the table. Don't forget to import it, okay? I imported it from React Bootstrap. If you forget this, it will not compile, okay? We will try. Uh, you see, there's a, already a different appearance, okay? We are not evaluating appearance at the exam, but you know, it should be usable. But if you use the default of uh, Bootstrap, React Bootstrap, that's more than enough, okay? Maybe the only thing that you need to do is uh, making things a bit smaller or larger sometimes, okay? Uh, um, okay, so, uh, so now a table appears here, right? Uh, which, no, actually, well, uh, it's, well, it's a long story, uh, no. Okay, remember, if you forget to import it, uh, that's the result, okay? It doesn't render or it gives you, it gives you problems, right? Yeah, sh in short, it, it doesn't render because uh, uh, it's a component which which is not, uh, has no function, okay? Uh, table, okay? Let's check, okay. You see that uh, I didn't press reload, it automatically reloads both the, c the web server and the client because uh, this development environment has a part also on the client that uh, talk with the server on a separate channel to, uh, to know when things should be reloaded, okay? Um, this is just for development, but it's very convenient. And then uh, let's uh, try to define the, the table, right? Um, so we have an answer row, okay? So actually this is just an example of a row. This is static. Let's tr try to make it dynamic, okay? So let's take it, uh, control X, so I cut it and I create uh, a, a component, a function, uh, what was the name? Answer row, answer row, props, return. Okay, let's put this stuff inside. Uh, Let's format a little bit. Okay, we still need to add the answer row down. Okay, let's check everything is fine, yes. Always check every step you check, otherwise uh, finding errors becomes difficult, especially if you are alone, okay? And you're learning. Okay, fine, but why? Uh, why should I put uh, static values? I mean, this is not really a nice thing, right? Um, so there are props, right? You see they are not used at the moment, but I can use props. Okay, let's start for the simpler one, okay? Let's, let's say there's props, uh, e, props, uh, no, props, um, props, uh, text, okay? I can pass uh, a value here, 
At the moment, it's nothing. So indeed, the text has disappeared. Okay, but I can pass a value. I need to speed up a little bit. So, uh, what was the text, right? Text. Let's pass uh, something from a JavaScript expression. We have uh, an answer list. Okay, answer list that has all the answers. So, answer list. Zero, let's take the first one, text, okay? Okay, there's something here. Fine. So I could pass uh, the respondent, the score, the date, etc., as single properties, or I can pass simply an entire object, okay? That's JavaScript, right? I can pass anything as a property. So let's pass the entire object. So let's save it. Now it doesn't work, of course. But let's pass the entire object. Uh, and so there will be props. Uh, uh, no, what's, what was the name? Text. No, I don't like it. Answer. Or, yes, ans answer. OK? Answer, that's the name I gave. So props, answer. Answer, that's the object, and then inside the object, there's a text, right? For, off, again. And I can do the same for the rest, okay? Let me copy and, well, bef before doing that, uh, uh, let me still do a modification. Const uh, e props answer. This is, a, this is a function, okay? I can write any JavaScript code I like. The important thing is that item potent. It does, doesn't have side effect. But I can compute whatever I want from the properties. I can assign it to other variables, etc. Okay? So I can write e text, right? So save it and let's see. Yeah, it works. So now I copy and paste a little bit. Uh, source up. So let's, uh, yeah, uh, copy and paste the stuff. This can be closed. And this, yes, this will be changed as a whole. OK? So I've set the date, the text, the respondent, the score, and also added the button. OK? Let's see if the result works. Yes, fine. OK, good. So let's recap. There's an answer row. Now we have only one row, which I'm inserting here. OK, answer, answer list zero. But I would like to have the whole list, right? Not just uh, an element. OK, so let's make a, a second component. I think I did it with, yes, with a table. Yeah, I did with, with the table. No, I didn't do the component. Let, let's do it here. And then I can make the table a component as well, because the table is the list, right? So I would like to have it uh, in a reusable form, OK, later. But uh, uh, I will put the solution online after. Let's co focus on the list. How do I specify a list? The list, I will say, to specify a list, we should have an array. An array in the JavaScript, OK? But the array should be uh, an array of components, because it needs to get rendered, OK? So there's the answer list, answer list. That's the list. That's the array with the basic info. And now, probably, you, you got the idea. Map, OK? So we transform each element in the array into what? Into the component. So the component can be written here because it's just JavaScript, OK? It will be translated into JavaScript. So I can write simply answer, answer row, OK? Answer equal to E. OK? Close it. That's all. Save. There's something wrong. 
probably not wrong, but a war. No, expected. Ah, close the, the brackets. You're right, right. You're right. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Okay. You saw four answers because we had an array with four answers, right? You see, answer row, answer row, answer row, answer row. This has been automatically created and rendered by React. Okay? That should be. No, there's no warning. Well, well um, there should be a warning. I don't know why there's no warning at the moment. Anyway, well, there, there's we are still missing one thing, okay? Do it, which I was saying before, that's the key, okay? You remember with the list we said we need to have a, a key, okay? For each um, element, okay, in the list. So key equal to, well, actually, either we have a, a unique key in, in the data, so we could write EID, because we have the ID, luckily, okay? So the, the render doesn't change, it's just the React internal stuff, okay, to make it more efficient. Or if you don't have a, an, an ID, okay, you can do this trick, which you need to be a bit careful about this, okay? But you remember that the second parameter of the callback to the map is the index in the array. And the index is, by definition, unique, right? Zero, one, two. Uh, and so you could write like this, okay? And the result should be exactly the same. What's the difference between the two? And then we will stop. The difference between the two is that one is a unique ID for the data, okay? So that's a more correct thing that we should put here because this key is used by React to decide if it should re-render or not the content that correspond to that element in the list. And so if the ID changes, it means the content has changed because by definition we say this ID is, uni is unique to this answer, okay? If you use the index of the array, it means that uh, if we get the same index for different content, so like we are inserting or deleting stuff from the array, we can have the same index for different content and this content will not be re-rendered by React even if it changed because React stopped the analysis only on the key, okay? So if the key is the same, means the content has not changed, okay? Um, so, uh, that's the difference, so uh, for the moment let's leave it like this, okay? And we will think a little bit about uh, this problem later when in the application we will encounter issues uh, with this uh, situation, okay? I will put online a solution that also has a, a my table component. So it means that we take all the stuff uh, for the table and we put it uh, into a component, okay? So you have a, an, a, a, an additional component uh, in the solution. But actually it's quite straightforward. It's just copying and pasting this stuff into another function, okay? So remember tomorrow there is a lab on the last topics about JavaScript in the browser. The text is already online, okay? And Tuesday, there's no lecture, it's holiday, right? And so we will meet again on Monday in, in, in seven uh, days, okay? Next week. Okay, no questions, so thank you.